Hello, it's Greg Allison with Green Greg's Garden and Worm Farm coming to you from my turmeric patch. I've talked to you in the past about foraging from the forest. You need to learn how to gather your own food from the forest in addition to growing your own food, especially in a bug out situation. So I'm going to show you what's available. The tough thing is the winter time. So here in Alabama, I'm eight miles from Tennessee border. It grows on seven right in the middle of it. it fluctuates from time to time between being classified as 7A to 7B. Give you an idea of the grows on them in. But there's a lot of places you can find food to forage all year long. And you can do that here. And one of the things that we have available to us here, as I mentioned in uh, my turmeric harvesting video, is the uh, this stuff. This is chickweed. You can tell by these little flowers in here when they're, they're about to bloom out. They're... Uh, They've got little multi-points on them, uh, they're like a little star when they bloom out. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, uh, I can barely see inside this viewfinder. But anyway, chickweed is uh, highly nutritious, but it's uh, got a, a little bit of oxalic acid, so you want to watch how much of this stuff you eat. But it grows very prodigiously here year-round. Um, let's see if I can get the flower up here. To the, you see that flower? Maybe I should show this stuff when it flowers out more. Here's some. There we go. It'll make a little star pattern. And uh, it's got characteristic leaves to it. Uh, they're usually broader. Now this has been highly disturbed because I've harvested my turmeric here. But in any event, you can see I've got lots of it growing here. And this is curly dock. You can eat curly dock and sour dock. That stuff grows year round here. But you say, Greg, we're way up north. We don't have uh, those kind of greens going on. Our ground's covered with snow. Well, I see a lot of food right here. As I mentioned before, I pointed up in the trees out here and said, I see lots of food. And you go, what are we going to eat? Wood? No. Yeah, look here, deer traps. You might get a deer if you're lucky, but like I said, you probably won't be any. Uh, so we'll walk back here and we'll, we'll look and harvesting some food out of a tree. So give me just a second here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take out a piece of one of these pine trees here next to my wood hinge project. This is my favorite knife, hand forged bolo. Had this knife since I was 12 years old. That means 47 years. What I like about this knife is I've never needed a hatchet or an axe when I carry it. So this tree's gonna have to come down anyway. As you can see it cuts very nicely. Although it's a little harder to do when I'm holding a camera. Hey, why don't you get somebody to film for you? Yeah, you're right. There we go. Didn't take me but a few whacks, as you can see. I got that off. Now, my friends, don't that look just delicious? Greg, how am I going to eat a tree? I can't eat that. Well, you no, you can't eat the wood. But if there's something else in here you can eat. Get some of these limbs off here. So what you want to do is. I'm overdoing it here. I'm going to peel back some of this bark and stick this knife in something more to stick up. Out of the way. So those are great knives. And I'm going to pull out another great knife to use here. Now, if you look in here, you're going to see there's a little green layer in here. That's the Cambrian, the living tissue of a tree. If you, I'm overdoing it here. If you just take the bark, and take off the woody part of the bark. Just the woody part. You're going for the stuff inside, the stuff that's still soft, not the woody stuff. You can't eat wood. Human beings cannot digest wood fiber. No more than we digest grass. No, you can't digest grass. We won't right there, really, inside that bark. Uh, but I only got one hand going here. So. Ah, look at that strip. You see that strip that's coming off there? Nice and soft and pliable. You see this strip? That is Cambrian. 
So to give you an idea, that you can eat. You can take this stuff, and it actually tastes pretty good off of a pine. Now I'm not going to say you can eat off all pines, but by and far the majority of pines have edible cambrian, some of the best stuff you can eat in terms of uh, tree bark. It's the inner inner bark of the tree. Mm. I'm eating it right now. As long as this stuff comes off, where you can peel it, where it's uh, pliable, green. Uh, actually, I'm getting removing some of the good stuff here with the outer bark. So if you just don't want to cut too deep, or you're 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 in the stuff that you can't eat. But there's a thin layer that goes around all the wood. Just like this. You, just like this. A thin layer inside all the wood that's perfectly edible. And it surrounds all wood. So, it's chewy. Got a lot of fiber. Perfectly edible. So, the good news is, I don't know anywhere there's a forest, except out in some of the worst deserts, that don't have trees or something you can eat. And if you get in where it's too chewy, you might spit out some of it. If you get down too deep in there, just get the juices out. Also, these needles. Again, I'm not a botanist. So check with your local experts. Trees and the varieties change quite a bit. But something else I like to do, about off the end of that. I always like trim pine straw as the green stuff. More vitamin C than oranges. And it tastes good, it's kind of tangy. That reminds me of citrus. Mm. And you can't follow this stuff. So, I spit it out. But you can make tea out of that. You can make tea out of this. You can eat the inner bark of these trees. And there's whole logs of it. Now I don't just go wantonly killing trees. I've got to take those out anyway. And there was two growing beside each other. Even if I didn't take them out, they're too crowded. So it's no great loss. I can burn this in a fire later. And uh, along with some of this other stuff. So the good thing is, you got to harvest firewood. You're going to need wood for cordage and many other things. Uh, making structures, whatever, baskets. Like I said, mainly firewood. But the green stuff, uh, you know, it burns long once you put it on a fire. If you want a long burning fire, it's good. So, there you go. There's always something to eat in the forest. You just got to know that. Look at all that food up in there. Every one of those limbs, trees, and trunks is covered with food. And eventually you're going to need logs, lumber, and uh, firewood. My dad was here this morning, and he looked up at all these pine trees and said, man, that'd be great stove wood trees. That's the kind of trees he cut as a kid growing up for stove wood. They had to cut trees in order to eat. They had to cook with wood. That was a fire in their house. They, didn't, they weren't on an electrical grid when he was a young man until he, after World War II, where we, where we grew up. No power then. So, ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you, there's a fabulous buffet all around us here. And you can't eat to survive. And uh, we will cover a lot more stuff when it gets warmer weather, when there's a lot more greens growing. But that gives you an idea. There's always nuts, uh, you know, hickory nuts and walnuts that grow wild here in America. That the squirrels uh, squirrel away, you might find those. And also you will know that you can eat acorns. But oh my God, you've got to soak them and soak them and soak them. And hopefully in salty water. And maybe I'll show you a trick or two about making salt even. You do need salt in, at some point in the future. So we'll do more on wild foraging. Probably in the springtime, but just remember, there's a lot of stuff that grow the docks, the curly docks, the sour docks, the uh, um, and, there, and I always have a good ample supply of chickweed here. So check with your local experts for your area and uh, find out about your pine trees. Most of them, by far the 90, probably 95 percent of them, are edible. Some may not be, but you know, take it easy. You can take those uh, that inner bark, you can fry it, you can uh, dry it. You can cut it up, grind it up, and make flour out of it. You can have pine 
uh, pine bark, pancakes, and biscuits, and bread. So, no point in starving when you know that the forests are loaded with food. You just got to know how to get it, and now you do. So, thank you for watching. <laughs>